about two um, viewers on and more people should be joining throughout. But um, thank you all for joining us today for Feed the Soul's Soul Session. Feed the Soul is the nonprofit arm of Black Restaurant Week, LLC. And this is our Soul Session series, which um, highlights a lot of our national consultants as they share their area of expertise. Tonight we have Ms. Tony S. Brown, who's gonna talk to us about having a messaging mindset in business. Tony, do you wanna tell us a little, a little bit about yourself and then go ahead and move into your PowerPoint? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Ashley. That was a good introduction. My name is Tony Brown, and I'm a brand strategist and designer. I am the owner of Sky Media Group, which is an um, agency in Baltimore that works with nonprofits and women entrepreneurs to help them to build strategic businesses through messaging, brand strategy, brand identity, and website design and coaching. I work with um, women and nonprofits so that they can grow their business based on their impact. I'm excited to be here today because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is having a messaging mindset in business. So just a little backstory on me. I come from a corporate background um, where I was a legal assistant for years. I started my business while I was a legal assistant, and my goal was to make the internet, the internet beautiful one website at a time. I worked with clients for years until I realized that something was missing, that it wasn't just about visuals that really made an impact. So after doing some studying and learning, I figured out that it was brand strategy and messaging that really helped businesses to be unique, especially when markets are saturated and people in similar businesses create similar visuals. I figure that brand strategy and messaging is what really stands businesses apart. So I'm excited to talk about that today. So thank you for joining today's webinar. Just a few housekeeping tips. Please keep your microphone on mute. Um, it will be interactive, so I'll ask questions throughout. And when I do, you can unmute yourself and share. But after you finish sharing, if you could mute your microphone back, that would be great. Please utilize the chat box for questions and answers. Um, the moderators will um, ask your questions and I'll answer them. And always get to know everybody in the room. You never know who else can assist you in growing your business. So here's a personal quote that I like. The more you know who you are, and what you want, the easier it'll be to grow your business. And that's not just in growing your business. When you know who you are as a person and what you want, you can attract the type of opportunities and um, interests that you desire. So I think it's very important in business to not only have a great product and service, but to know who you are and what you want so that you can put it out there and attract the people that are interested in you. So here's a quick agenda on what we will be discussing today. So what not to do. So when it comes to creating a brand message, there are things that you that I feel that you shouldn't do um, in my experience, what I've seen. Um, the five components of a compelling message. My quick formula for creating an attention grabbing message. And we're going to have a little fun with a case study from Sweetgreen. And we'll talk about major marketing areas that um, affect your messaging. And then we'll have a Q&A. So let's get started. But first, I want you to do a personal brand message audit. So ask yourself, do you have a brand message? Only you know that. Is my business's brand message easy to understand? So is it clear? Is it compelling? Or when people see your message, are they confused? and they just don't comprehend. Do you share your message and stories about your business? So when you are talking about your business, what types of things are you saying? Are you just talking about selling or are you really sharing your message and your stories? What methods do you use to share your message? So there are a lot of different ways to get your message out when you have a business. So what methods do you use? And where's your audience when you're sharing this message? So do your employees know your brand's message? It's important to have internal buy-in with your business because these are the people that want to talk about your business when 
They talk to friends and these are going to be the people that recommend your business to other people. So do your employees know your brand's message? So this is just a, a few questions to ask yourself when you're doing this personal brand message audit. So here are a few top messaging myths and mistakes. So the first one is when businesses say, or people say, I don't need a message. Well, without a message, how can people know who you are, what you stand for, and how you can help them? It's not just about your visuals, your logo, your website. It really is about what you say. I like to think of it as a first date. You see um, somebody across the room. They look great. You go up to them and they start talking and then you lose interest. So they look good when they were when you were visually looking at them across the, the, the room. But once they came up to you and they started talking, it was like, never mind. And it's the same thing with your message. Your business can look great online. But as soon as you start talking about your message or if you don't have one, you will lose customers. Also, another myth is that visuals are more important than your message. Again, back to that analogy. Somebody looks good on the outside. You see somebody across the room. They look good on the outside. But when they start talking, you're like, never mind. So it's really what that person is saying that is going to attract or repel them um, from the other person. And it's the same thing with your business. You can have the best logo in the world. But if your message falls flat, you're going to lose people. Also, the another myth or excuse me, mistake is saying too much. So are you using long winded language when you talk about your message? When people go to your website, is your about page a novel long? Are you saying too much? Are you not saying or are you not saying enough? Are you minimizing your message? So instead of having um, on your um, our story page, for example, you have a paragraph. You know, that's not enough to really weave a story or message, something that your audience can buy into. So are you saying enough? Another myth that business owners um, have about messaging is that they think they need to be a good writer to write a good message. You don't need to be a good writer to write a good message. You just need to understand what your audience wants from you. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the presentation. Also, a lot of people, um, business owners think that having a lot of message or a lot of verbiage equals your brand message. So just because uh, back to, you know, I'm having a long, long winded language, just because you have a, a, a pages and pages full of messaging, it doesn't mean that that's the right message. It doesn't mean that that is going to attract your audience. So these are just a few mistakes and myths to um, just kind of think about as you go through your audit and when you think about your brand message. So why does your message matter? There is steep competition in every industry. There is no business that is brand new. Everything is being done under the sun. So when there is the competition, you have to have a unique standpoint and perspective so that you can separate yourself from similar businesses. And it's the same thing with the next reason. Similar businesses, there are tons of them. How is your business and how are you going to stand out? Also, your message brings your audience into your world. The stories that you tell bring your audience into your world. They make them either say, mm hmm, mm hmm. I understand that. Or they say, mm -mm, I, I, I don't know anything about that, but I want to know more. So does your message bring your audience into your world? Also, your message should demonstrate your passion. How passionate um, are you about the thing that you're doing? Or are you just in business to sell to people? You know, people don't want to be sold to. They want to be understood. They want to be a part of something bigger than them. That's the reason why um, that's one of the, the, the ways that brand loyalty is created, where you have people that will go out of their way to buy something because, you know, the company demonstrates the passion. And, and, and not only that, the products and services are good too. So that's a plus. Also, when you have a message, a good message, it eliminates the just another syndrome. So it's you, if you open up a new business, somebody won't say, oh, that's just another. Oh, that's just another that. That's just another this. You don't want your business to be just another. You really want to be unique in the market that you are in. So 
it's important for you to craft a message because it matters. So a successful business does more than sell products and services, does more than have thousands of Instagram followers, and does more than make money. What does a successful business do? Instead, they motivate through messaging and storytelling. They focus on their customers and they make an impact. So these are all of the factors that companies, excuse me, that consumers and customers, they, they want to be a part of. Like I, like I mentioned, nobody wants to be sold. So you don't just want to be considered another dollar or another number. You don't want your customers to feel that way either when they come into your business. You want everybody that touches your business from them finding you on social media to coming in your stores, your restaurants to feel cared about. But what's the connection between success and messaging? Let's find out. So the message, story, positioning, connection. So your message, what you say about your business, your story, and the stories you tell about your business and products, positioning, positions your business as the go-to or go away in your customer's mind. So that sentence is what you say about your business and the stories you tell about your business and products positions your business as the go-to or go away in your customer's mind. And so when you open you know, up your business's mouth, so to speak, to talk about your message, what are you saying? What stories are you sharing? How are you creating a personality and interest in your products and services, what are you saying? These type of things, these type of things with products and positioning aside, they either attract customers to your business or detract from your business. So it's very important that you create, craft a message and create stories that really support your mission and your vision and really helps your audience buy in to your business and positions you as the go-to. You want to be the best hot dog stand in town. So that's where messaging and story can help you. Mess telling your messaging and your story are integral to your business, but it's also a marketing strategy as well. Further, your success is connected to how well you can understand and articulate what your customers want, how you tell stories that give your products and services life and personality, and creating an audience-focused message. All of these things are for your audience. It's for them to understand that you care about their business. It's to understand that you're not just another, that you have a personality, that there's a rhyme or reason behind why you do what you do. Customers want to know this. It might seem like uh, weird to create messaging and story when you're in the food industry or in any industry, period. I mean, people want us to believe that you know, money is the most important thing, but you'll find companies that care about their customers have more brand loyalty from customer service to staff. All of those things show that you care and your messaging is really in your stories that you tell are a great start to that. So five components of a compelling message. Why, who, what, how, where, and when. So I'm going to elaborate on each one of those. So why? Why did you start a business? Why And why did you start this business? Those two questions go together. You know, it might seem strange to have storytelling and messaging when it comes to, you know, food, for example. But your customers, they aren't just interested in your food. They're interested in where does the food come from? Is it Low is it? Um, are the ingredients locally sourced? Is the owner a chef? Is um, you know, did the person grow up cooking um, in the kitchen with their grandmother? Customers want to know those type of stories. It really helps them to um, be a part of a community of belonging when they come into um, a restaurant or even with a business in general. They want to feel like they belong and that they're not just another number. Also. You want to articulate why should anyone care? So why should anyone care about your business? It, it, it might seem weird, you know, but just because you care about your business doesn't mean that consumers care about your business. You have to give them a reason to care. They also want to know why are you, your business and its story special? So what makes these things special? 
did you, you know, um, again, uh, grow up doing this? Did you, you know, leave a lucrative career to follow your passion? The stories that you tell and your messaging really um, identifies you as somebody who's not just uh, you know, uh, they not just talk in the talk, but they also have walked the walk and you will be in connection with many people that have many different experiences. So when you share yours and when you have a message that will have people say, hmm, I like what they're talking about. I went through something similar. I want to work with them or I want to go into their establishment. These are reasons why you should explain why. Also, who? So who are you? Where did you come from? What's your background? What led you to be um, where you are? What led you to open up this business? Who are you? Also, who do you want to be in business? So what is your vision for your business? Um, people, they want to know that you're going to be around, that you're not just like a fly by night business. So when you have a bigger vision for your business, people can say, okay, they're going to be around. I'm not, I, I know I can trust them with my money. I know I can trust them with, you know, my time and being a part of, you know, their community and going to their business. Also, you want to know who is your business for? Who isn't your business for? When you can identify those things, it will help attract the right type of people. So if you um, are an owner of a vegan restaurant, people that don't eat meat would want to come to your restaurant, whereas people that do eat meat, they might not. So it's great to identify who your business is for and who your business isn't for and who will represent your brand. Will you hire a brand ambassador? Will your employees be tasked to really know the brand story, the messaging? If it's not the CEO or the chef, who is going to represent your business? These are the people that will be forward facing and will be talking about your business to other people and getting them interested in coming in. Also, what? What does your business believe in? Businesses have personalities. They have values. It's not just um, people, individuals that have values, but what is the company culture? What do, is it, you know, is the, is the core value honesty? Is it authenticity? Is it, you know, freshness? What is it? Articulating that is important because people will know, again, that your business is not just about money, that you really have a long reaching vision and personality behind what you're doing. Also knowing what your audience wants will help you to create content and services and products that they're going to buy. What kind of experience does your business provide? So yes, when people come into um, a, a restaurant, for example, and eat, they're coming for food. But how is the experience? Are they greeted at the door um, by a host or do they just sit down? Um, does somebody come right over and give them a menu? or, you know, et cetera. What is the experience like? This is what you want to articulate in your message. So even before somebody comes into your business, they'll understand just what type of environment they're going to be a part of when they arrive or when they work with you. What kind of consumer culture do you want to cultivate? So your staff, who is going to be um, at the, you know, at the head of your business speaking about your business? Is the vibe and personality of your business funky? Is it fresh? Is it professional? Those type of things you want to weave into your message right at the beginning so people, you know, understand what they're getting when they work with you. So also how? How does your business improve the community? If you have a, a, a physical brick and mortar business, all of the other businesses in the area, they will support each other. How is your business going to improve that community and improve the lives of the people that are in that community? How will it enrich their lives? For people that, um, like where I'm from in Baltimore, Baltimore is a very um, community-based type of um, city and businesses that are in those communities, people really buy into those um, businesses. They talk about them, they build them up, they advocate for them. 
So how is your business going to improve the community? This speaks to your mission. It shows that you're not just um, in a community trying to get money out of it, that you're also um, adding back to the community. So that's important. How can you make every customer a brand ambassador? Do you have a loyalty program? Do you have, you know, Wacky Wednesdays, Taco Tuesdays? Is it something that your customers can really tell people about? And they tell people about it unprompted. You don't have to, you know, pay them to say, tell people it's Taco Tuesday on Tuesday. They actually can say, hey, hey, it's Taco Tuesday, let's go. So how can you make every customer a brand ambassador? Also, how are you sharing your message and story? Are you using email marketing? Um, again, a loyalty program. Are you on social media? Are you tweeting? How are you sharing this message and story? Where and when? So where will your business have the most impact? Should you be... Um, Again, with a brand ambassador or somebody that's represent, representing your business, should there be uh, some type of media program where they can speak about the business on a podcast? Or is there someone assigned to create blog posts um, or, or a social media manager? So where will your business have the most impact? And it goes along with when do you begin to engage with customers? It's my opinion that um, when you get started with a business, it's very important to start engaging your customers even before you launch. So if you have a pre-launch, if you're on social media, if you're tweeting, just having pre-launch activities up until the date that you launch and even beyond can help your customers to become engaged and buy into what you're doing even before you launch. Also, where are your customers? Are your customers primarily local? Are they national? Do they hang out um, at coffee shops? Uh, where are they? Your messaging can help you be in spaces that um, your audience is. So if you are a bakery and you know that your customers hang out at a coffee shop, when you create your social media posts, for example, and use hashtags, instead of just saying bakery, Hashtag bake good, hashtag um, bakery, you can say hashtag coffee shop goods or hashtag, you know, and make the connection between your business and um, other uh, other businesses, customers. And you can get help. You can get those customers as well. So where are your customers? It's important that you know that so you can be where they are. So I have a quick formula for message creation. I like to ask my clients, do you have your PhDs? And of course, it's not the medical degree. What I'm talking about is pain points, hesitations, desires, and solutions. This is how I create messaging, audience um, grabbing messaging for my clients, helping them to understand. One, pain points. What bad experiences have your customers had? So understanding what bad experiences they have, have had will help you to create services and products that can improve or solve that issue. It will help them to forget about those bad experiences and know that you and your business are the right choice, are will, will provide those good experiences. And so knowing those bad experiences are important. That is a definite pain point. Also, what are they? How do they feel about those experiences? What are their emotions behind those? Do they feel sad, upset, angry, frustrated, confused? Your job is to overturn all of that with them being a part of your business and being a customer, working with you, going to your restaurant, that you want to overturn all that. You want to undo all the badness. And so, for example, um, I know it's it's a running joke that, you know, when you go to a McDonald's, the, uh, the ice cream machine is never working. But so if you're a Chick-fil-A, your ice cream machine, it needs to work because people want ice cream. And when they go, you know, to McDonald's, the ice cream machine is not working. Yours needs to be working. So you want to overturn that bad experience. And then you want to turn a frustrated customer of someone else's into a satisfied customer of yours. Also, what is going on in their life that is driving them to 
go to your business? Uh, are they getting married? Are they celebrating something? Um, are they having a life transformation? Are they, you know, were they sick? So what is driving them to come to your business? And so this is just a question to you. What pain points does your industry have? Um, it's okay if you, for you to take off your mic and answer, but what pain points does your industry have? And anybody can unmute if you want. Okay, well, come back. We'll think about it later. I'll, uh, I'll give you one. Um, okay. My industry... Uh... In, in the smoothie industry, it's, um, I guess the pain point would be that it, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, people are used to things happening so fast these days, and we don't make things until people mm -hmm. order them. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. once they order, you know, sometimes people get a little impatient because they have to wait for the materials to be put in, blended, and then given back to them. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yes, yeah, smoothies do take time. And so um, I make smoothies and I actually enjoy putting out all the ingredients and 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 it's 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 a joy to me to create my own um, smoothie. So, and and then I think about the opposite of, you know, as opposed to getting a smoothie that was, that you get out of the um, grocery store that's prepackaged and sometimes it's too sugary, it's not sugary enough. It has preservatives, it has different things in it. So from a marketing perspective, trying to overturn that, I will focus on the freshness of the ingredients that's used, that you know it's not too sweet. There are no preservatives. It's healthy. And that good things take time and good things come to those who wait. So um, that's just, you know, one way that you can turn a pain point into a positive point. But that was good. Thank you, Jonathan. I have one I can share. Okay. Um, although I'm not necessarily in the restaurant industry, when I work with restaurant clients, um, one of my clients, one of her pain points um, was that their food came out fast, but they allowed no modifications and, uh -huh. and in order to satisfy the quick of the client. The food was great, but there was no modification. So if you have some type of allergy or something like that, so sorry for you. Um, and that was a pain point because we didn't want to sacrifice the quality of the food or the time of the food in order to get it um, to the table on time and still have it be delicious. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Simone. So that's a good point. And, and that's that's a pain point because I've been in situations where they will allow modifications. So I think that when that is a company policy, that it's important to um, articulate that on the website, but not to turn it into a rule, but turn it into a quality of service and explain that, you know, we don't allow modifications because we have perfected the recipe just so that these um, ingredients work perfectly well together. So while we don't allow for modifications, you will still be satisfied with your meal. So even if it's a company policy, not to turn it into like hard rule and make people feel bad that they want modifications, but help them to see the benefits of having a meal that the ingredients all blend together and that, you know, quality won't be sacrificed with this, you know, mess, um, excuse me, a meal that's coming together. So that's good. So, so you see, it's always a way to turn that pain point into a positive point. Next, the H, hesitations. Why, excuse me, um, what is stopping them from coming to your business? So, um, it could be price. It could be location. It could be um, there, there are no modifications to food. It can be the time it takes to make something. So understand what's stopping them from coming to your business will help you to do the opposite and to talk about it in a way that's positive and that is beneficial for them to, you know, uh, do it this way or to come to you. Also, how do they feel about those experiences that are stopping them from coming to your business? And um, pain points are similar to hesitations, and I didn't um, switch it around, but just the same hesitations are still pain points. They stop people from coming to your business. There is something that's that's causing them to, to pause. And it's, it's very important that you find out what that is so that you can overturn it. So um, how can we um, overturn those hesitations? Social media is a great way to do it. 
putting it in your captions, turning it into quotes, into stories. It's a great way to overturn um, um, these hesitations and explaining. So sometimes businesses get into a way of, of saying, well, this is just how we do it. Um, we, we've always done it this way and we're going to continue to do it this way. Well, if that's the case, then that's the case. But explain to your customers why that is. Is it a, is it a family tradition? Is it a family owned business that has been through generations of, you know, making corn just this way? Or, you know, has it always explain why that is? And when you explain why, um, you know, something is, it dignifies your customer, it dignifies your clients. And so the hesitation can, you know, be halted and they can continue coming to your business. Also, desires. So why are your customers coming to you? What do they really want? Do they really want just a burger and fries or are they looking for something else? Do they really just want a new logo or do they want something else? Why are customers coming to your business? And it's important for you to know that so that that is what you focus on when there are pain points and hesitations. Yes, we don't allow for food modification, but this is the best chicken and waffles that you will have. And we know that you're coming here for that. So it'll allow you to create content that, you know, really overturns um, those pain points and hesitations and really minimizes um, what um, uh, those pain points and hesitations. So also, how do they want to feel? So with their pain points, they might feel frustrated, tired, confused, but how do they really want to feel? Do they want to feel happy? Do they want to feel youthful, joyful? How do they want to feel? On your um, uh, marketing, it's important for you to demonstrate and depict what that desire looks like. Maybe you will have um, a, a woman that's smiling or, you know, a family that's hugging up or, you know, somebody that's enjoying a, a, a delicious meal. How does that look? How do they want to feel? Also, how would their lives be affected after coming to you? People want to feel like they belong to something that is bigger than them. Not just that it is a one-off situation and, and they buy something or work with you and it's just one and done and they're gone. They want to really feel like their lives are being improved by coming to your place of business, by working with you, by coming to your restaurant. Will they go home satisfied? Will they finally be able to do the thing that they always wanted to do after coming to you? It's important to know how their lives will be affected because when you know that, then you can create solutions. And those solutions center around what kind of experience will elevate their lives or make them feel like they belong. One of Starbucks's um, core values is having a sense of belonging. So when you go into Starbucks, they have, you know, the warm wood, the place smells like coffee, people are nice, they have the nice music, you can sit in there all day on your Wi-Fi because they want their customers to have a sense of belonging. And so it's important to um, create an experience that's going to elevate their lives or make them feel better or improve their lives or make them feel like they belong. Also, how can you improve and help them overcome their hesitations and pain points? Sometimes those hesitations and pain points are not just coming from them. They're coming from experiences that they have had. So when they come to you, how can you improve to help them overcome what they've gone through? Just for example, um, as was mentioned, if you have a policy that... Um, People hesitate with, you know, well, we can't change our food here. Well, what can you do to improve that? While you might not be able to change it, what can you say about that thing so that they can feel like, hmm, okay, I can't change my food. That's all right. Well, I'm going to go there anyway because they have this loyalty program that they just started for people just like me. So how can you improve your business and how can you improve yourself so that they'll, you know, come to you despite those hesitations and pain points? Also, what future solutions or products can you create? It's important to always have um, something new on the horizon. Yes, you want to perfect and hone what's always been done well, but just being a visionary and thinking into the future, what other solutions and products can you create? So, for instance, um, uh, 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 at a restaurant, they might have a cooking class. So they might offer cooking classes. So now that everybody is home, 
people are cooking more. And I don't know about you, but I need cooking classes. So it would be very um, you know, exciting to have a place where I love to eat to offer cooking classes and maybe would teach how to make their favorite meal. So that's an example of a future product or service that you can create. So your brand message affects your marketing. Where? So on your websites, your welcome page, you have about seven seconds to capture the attention of your audience. And of course, if there are beautiful pictures of food or people or the location is beautiful, people are going to be attracted to that. But then if they go further down on the page and you're not describing what's in a particular meal or you're not describing what's in a particular product or service, they're going to be confused. And you don't want them searching around for things because they can just click off and just go someplace else. So it's important that your brand message live on your welcome page. Also on your Our Story page, your brand message is there, but more importantly, it's the stories. So your business is beginning, the owner's beginning. Um, what um, what type of lessons have they learned? Just weaving that whole story through. And on your services page or your products page, if you have products um, saying that, you know, something like um, we serve or, you know, this this item has, um, you know, chicken and waffles. OK, that's great. There's a lot of chicken and waffle places. But what's the waffle made of? Um, what's in the chicken? Is it some type of special sauce? So that is part of your messaging because it's describing something on social media. So it is very important, especially for restaurants to be on social media because people love pictures of food. I know I do. And so in your posts and in your captions on the media that you show, your brand message can be weaved into those things. And so that includes like your core values. And we'll talk a little bit um, about um, the case study for Sweet Green in a bit um, because they do that well. But in your captions, instead of saying, you know, we are offering, you know, just this thing today, talk about where that thing came from. So, you know, on a rainy day, we really wanted a, a, a dessert. And so we decided to put blueberries and lemon together and it tastes like a, a warm summer day, something like that. So you're giving personality to your food, to your business. You're not just presenting it, you know, as is. Also in your media, Video and pictures are very important when it comes to reinforcing your message. And so if you say that you're a hip fun restaurant, but people go to your social media and it looks boring, well, how, how does that reinforce your message? It is a disconnect and people will click away. Also, your brand message affecting your culture internally and externally. So internally, does your staff know what the core values are? Can they repeat them, you know, if asked? Do they understand the stories behind the food? Have they tried the food? Do they know what's in the food? So they will be your brand ambassadors when they're talking to other people about your business. And then external culture. What is your experience like? Whether you own a restaurant or brick and mortar or not, having external culture is very important to creating a community around your business. How are you making people feel like they belong when they interact with you? When they send you an email, do they have to wait a week to hear back from you or do you respond within a couple hours? All of that is part of um, the experience and that can be articulated in your brand message as well. So case study of sweet green. So what is sweet green doing right? They're leading with their message and mission. So they don't just say we make salads from scratch. That's not in their bio. They tell you that they're building healthier communities by connecting people to real food. That is their mission. And when you read that, you understand that Sweet Green makes salad with different ingredients, but that their bigger mission is that they're building healthy, healthier communities and they're, you know, connecting people with real food and not prepackaged food. If you are a person that's interested in that, then you would want to go to Sweet Green because you're eating healthy. They're building healthier communities. So it's not just about you, um, them trying to get you to purchase a salad, but that they really are interested in your health. They want you to be healthy through eating their food. 
That's a great way to lead with message, message and mission. To so put it in your Instagram bio. Also, what are they doing right? They're enlisting brand ambassadors and creating campaigns that align with their values. And so recently, um, Naomi Osaka is one of their ambassadors. And on their Instagram um, page, you will see pictures of her and um, um, Sweet Green's food and her um, and them talking about um, what her favorite salad is. And she did a video and everything like that. So this is an example. She is an example of, of an external brand ambassadors. Her and, and it's important that your brand ambassadors, the people that you choose, whether they're staff members or external influencers, that what they believe in align with what your company believes in. So if Naomi, for example, I'm not sure if she's a vegetarian, but say she was and she was being a brand ambassador for a company that you know has meat, that would be a disconnect. Those two things wouldn't work together. And, the, and, and with that, you would, you know, um, your audience would be confused. So it's important that the brand ambassadors that you use their value, it's important that their values align with your own company values. Also, Sweet Green is creating content that people love. So when you look at their social media feed, notice that there are there are just four pictures that have um, pictures of food. Everything else um, is giving you a glimpse into their company culture. So the building pictures, the pictures, um, the buildings look clean. Um, they look fresh. And that really um, reinforces the, the fresh and clean ingredients that they use. So even though they're not depict the um, buildings with the buildings, it's not um, 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 saying it up front. You get the point. Their ingredients are fresh and clean, and so are the buildings that they're using. Then they have several posts with Naomi on there. And again, she's their brand ambassador. And with the way that they have used um, the photos, they've used them smartly. Um, it's not just a picture of a bunch of food that's stacked on top of each other where you don't know if somebody's making potato salad or macaroni and cheese or green beans. You don't know what they're doing. So not only are the pictures that they use and the right type of pictures that reinforce the message. The pictures themselves are shot beautifully and they have a, a, they're have given um, good visuals and breathing room around the whole um, feed. Everything, the, their feed, these are the, the most recent pictures, but everything just looks so fresh and it just really reinforces Sweet Green's fresh perspective about salads. So, in conclusion, um, having a messaging mindset in business, it connects you to your customers and shows that you care. So nobody wants to be sold to. They, they don't want to be, you know, it's not, it's not for your business to sell. It's your business to storytell and to share your message, to talk about what makes you unique, to talk about how you can help your customers and change their lives and to talk about out, um, another thing. You also want to articulate what makes your business special. So all of us personally know that our businesses are special, but if you don't ever communicate that, then how will people know? Part of branding is influencing what people think about your business. Because as soon as you say you have a business or as soon as you start a business, people are already drawing conclusions about who you are and the quality of your services. So it's important that you build a brand so that you can start shaping those perceptions. And there's no better way to start shaping those perceptions than by what you say. Also, when you have a messaging mindset, it'll motivate your customers to care. So not only will they know you care, but it'll motivate them to care. And they'll say, hmm, OK, yes, I have to drive 10 minutes or 30 minutes to go you know, to this to this place to get this thing. But it's worth it because when I come in, people, you know, greet me with a smile. And um, for example, I think about Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, where I am, the line is always wrapped around the building several times. And the um, waiting spaces are always filled up. 
but I will wait in line or I will wait for a space because I know that when I go to Chick-fil-A that every time I'm going to be greeted with a smile, the food is going to come out timely, their workers are respectful, and this that it shows that the company has really trained the staff and everybody has really bought into that company culture. They know the message that um, Chick-fil-A is putting out. They know the vibe that Chick-fil-A is putting out. And so it makes me care about, you know, um, Chick-fil-A in the sense that I will wait. I'm not, you know, rude to the people. I don't get an attitude when they take a little bit longer because I know that they have quality um, food and they actually care. So, um, questions. I'm open. This is that was the final slide, and now I'm opening it up for questions. So, what questions do you have about brand messaging and storytelling? And I can't see any um, anything that's written in the chat. So, you so there's, can, there's, we don't see anything in the chat right now. I'm, I don't see anything in the chat. But if anyone on has any questions, feel free to unmute and ask any questions. This is the time. I'm glad you all know um, about brand messaging because it, it, it lets me know that you all are doing well. When you don't have any questions, you know how to use your brand message and you know what it is. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> exactly. So then uh, if you guys do have any questions or anyone watching it, um, the recording on YouTube or on Facebook, please feel free to email um, Tony at hello at brandcoachtony.com. And uh, she will get back to you. Tony, do you want to tell them yes. how to reach you in any other met, um, formats? Yeah, sure. You can go to, um, you can email me or there is a contact form on my page for you to book, book a clarity call. If you, you know, you're too shy, too shy to ask a question now, or maybe you think about it later and you want to have a more in-depth conversation, you can definitely um, schedule a clarity call. You can also interact with me on social media, mainly under Brand Coach Tony. Um, I have, um, um, reels, I answer DMs. So you can definitely reach me that way. Okay. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, and thank you all for viewing. Thank you for attending the Feed the Soul Soul Sessions. We'll be having more of these every other Thursday at 630. Um, so feel free to visit us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or just visit us at www.feedthesoulfou.org. Thank you all. Have a yes. great evening. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Tony. This was Thank great. you. Thank you, Tony. This was amazing. Thank you. Bye.